Hello, this is Zahir Lalum. Welcome you all on Frankly Speaking. My guest today is non-resident Finnish ambassador to Bangladesh, Nina Vaskunlati, who is based in New Delhi and concurrently accredited to Bangladesh. She presented her credentials to the Honorable Prime Minister in last May and she has been working hard to improve and promote bilateral relations and understanding and also trade and commerce between the two countries. We are very pleased to welcome Nina, Ambassador of Finland on Frankly Speaking. Welcome, Ambassador. Thank you very much and good evening. I'm very happy that uh, I'm joined by you today. Uh, let's start with your presentation of credentials. Um, in May, you presented credentials and you um, met with foreign minister. You offered, you proposed joint consultation. Mm -hmm. So these are all signaling that Finland is uh, keen, is very interested to improve bilateral relations and exploring potentials, exploring new avenues. So how would you explain? Indeed, uh, Sahirul, thank you very much for having me in this program tonight. I'm very happy to be in Dhaka again. This is my second time. As you, as you said, I, I presented my credentials to the president. I met uh, you during your first visit also. Indeed, uh, in, in May. And uh, this, since then, that this is my second visit. And uh, I would say that um, uh, the relationship between Finland and Bangladesh is good. So in a way, to, to use the word improve, might not be the best word because we have good relations already, but to expand and to explore what more we can do together. Uh, Finland is a small country up in the north, 5.5 million people. Bangladesh, 160, 160 million people. Million people uh, but in a very interesting uh, location geopolitic geopolitically and also a country that is facing many challenges in its development, but doing very well, I must say, when I, when I, when I look at the 6% growth figure, for instance. So your interest uh, with uh, joint consultation between the two countries, mm. has it been reciprocated by the Bangladesh? It has been reciprocated and indeed I was uh, very honoured to meet with your Honourable Foreign Minister and also your Minister of Commerce as well, by the way. Uh, we, we had with your both ministers, we had lengthy discussions and uh, with the Foreign Minister we thought that, you know, uh, something you know, new could be done and then the idea of the political consultations came up. And now, this, uh, now the, uh, the time is to find the dates. And I'm hoping that uh, maybe our Deputy Minister could be coming to Bangladesh sometime uh, early, early next year. Uh, and uh, then we could have uh, a good day of discussions to go through bilateral issues, go through uh, international issues, issues in the region, and, and to get to know its other better. Ambassador Nina, before coming to uh, this part of the uh, world, you uh, worked as an ambassador of Finland in Turkey. You worked in European Union, worked in Moscow. There's so many stations and also in your foreign ministry as uh, the director general. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, from that perspective, how did you see Bangladesh and what are your new uh, take on about the process of development, about the progress of this country have been making? You are right saying that you know coming to uh, to India and and to Bangladesh is was a new new page in the book of my life, uh, totally and in my career as well. I had never really, of course, I had thought of this part of the world, but I never thought I would uh, come here as an ambassador. When I got the opportunity, I took it because both of, both countries that I'm working, I'm accredited to both India and, and now Bangladesh are at the very interesting point of their development. Uh, Bangladesh is also a country, is a country of the future. As I said earlier, the economy is developing very rapidly. You know, a huge amount of people have been lifted from the poverty. Um, you are diversifying your economy. Um, you are getting more active in the, in the international front. So it's very exciting to be ambassador to a country uh, where things are going on. Where, where there is young population, where there is belief in the in the in belief in, in in the future, and just to remind you that Finland was one of the first countries that recognised the Bangladesh independence in February 1972. And we are grateful for that. <laughs> Thank you. And 2017, this is a special year for us because we are celebrating the 100th anniversary of the Finnish independence. Ambassador, despite of having all the uh, good sense about Bangladesh, 
the progress Bangladesh have been making. But right now, Bangladesh is facing, confronting a deep crisis, mm -hmm. which uh, coming out of the ethnic cleansing atrocities by Myanmar side and the huge population has already been arrived in Bangladesh. We received uh, huge, almost one million Rohingyas in Bangladesh. And international community also extending their support, also um, pledging to support Bangladesh for a peaceful resolution and, and helping out to get them back to their country of origin. How Finland uh, looking at this critical, at uh, this dire crisis in this part of the world? Indeed, it's a very dire and serious crisis. First of all, we would like to, con uh, we would like to um, I would say, congratulate Bangladesh for the excellent work that is doing in accommodating these people. As you said, I think the figure is close to one million million yes, yeah. at the moment. Yeah. And uh, you have created the, uh, the camps and areas in Cox's Bazar where people are uh, people can, can, can say. Finland, as a member of the European Union, uh, uh, we look at the situation very seriously. And the European Council of Ministers discussed the, um, the situation uh, only last week. And, uh, and first of all, we were demanding the stopping of the armed operations and atrocities in, um, in, in Myanmar. And, 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 and secondly, a, a safe return, safe and orderly return yeah. of the refugee, refugees should be, should be arranged. Uh, at the based same on the recommendation of Kofi Annan? I was going to say based on the recommendation of Kofi Annan. And uh, I mean, he's a former, as we now know, former Secretary General of the United Nations. And you know, all parties concerned should uh, go alongside of the recommendations. Uh, at the same time, European Union and we believe that we have to keep on dialogue with the, with the Myanmar, with the, with, with the, with the, with the regime and, uh, and all the parties concerned. Um, Ethnic cleansing, I mean, it has not yet been defined as such. I mean, there, are, there is discussion and research going on how to define the situation. But the UN organizations yeah. Yeah. Have, been, have been terming it as an ethnic the, cleansing, the, the, textbook the, example of ethnic cleansing. As I said, there is a, a, some have already taken the stand, some are still looking into the issue, but there are many, many, let's say, elements which point towards that direction. And there are continuing discussion at the UN. I think there will be a con discussion next week at the, at, the, at, the, at the third committee, if I remember correctly. And Finland, alongside with the European Union, we are providing humanitarian assistance, and we will keep on doing that. Finland as a country, we have uh, contributed towards building a field hospital in, yes, in, field Cox, in, in Cox Bazar, uh, that is through Red Crescent Society. Uh, Red Cross. Finnish, Finnish Cross Society, Finnish yeah. Cross is, is doing that, and that's close to four hundred thousand euro. Like? Uh, correct, yes, and there are one or two Finnish doctors and nurses okay. who are setting it up and, and running it at the moment. And uh, Finland, as a member of the European Union, we need and we want to give all the support to Bangladesh that you need in this situation, and we, we really sort of uh, uh, thank you okay. for what has been done so uh, far. Ambassador Nina, um, definitely uh, we'll discuss more about why it might take time to get a solution of this um, crisis. My guest is Ambassador of Finland. She is from Delhi, but concurrently responsible for Bangladesh also. Ambassador, uh, you have been, I mean, giving or shedding light on the resolution of this crisis. Definitely, Security Council have discussed this issue. UN Secretary General also time and again calling up on to the international um, players to come up for uh, reaching out to solution. Bangladesh Prime Minister, she has also um, called up on appeal to the international community. Diplomatic pressure is on and we understand that the role of European Union is also very uh, positive about it and they have already taken some actions. Mm -hmm. But where do you see, I mean, down the line five years later, uh, the, how the crisis might unfold in the days to come? That is a very tough question. And it's always very difficult to answer questions, um, you know, about the future. Um, the only thing I can say that we, all the parties concerned and the international community have to be pushing towards a, a peaceful solution. And, uh, and, and making it possible for Rohingyas to go back to uh, Rahine uh, in Myanmar and to make sure 
within the, within the discussions with the Myanmar government that law and order will, will prevail uh, in, in whatever part of the country of the uh, Rohingyas uh, can, can, can go back. Whether it happens, you know, in a month's time, one year's time, five years' time, difficult to say, because. Um, um, but the burden inflicted on Bangladesh, yeah. the shelter I mean, of Bangladesh. I, I mean, you, you, would it you, be possible you, for yeah. this country to? You, you are, you are, you're absolutely right. You, you are most affected, yeah. and therefore you need as much international support uh, as we are able to give you. And and uh, and of course we will uh, support you in your in your relations and your negotiations with, with your neighbour. Let's talk about uh, the promotion of trade and investment between the two countries. We know that uh, some of the companies uh, from Finland have good degree of partnership in Bangladesh. So um, uh, how you are trying to intensify the, and to facilitate those uh, potentials in terms of improving or promoting business or um, economic ties between the two countries? Indeed, there are a couple of uh, very well-known well Finnish companies who, who have established uh, themselves in Bangladesh or, or, let, or let's say they're doing uh, uh, good trade deals with, uh, with Bangladesh. There is a Finnish um, uh, company, Bertsila, uh, which some people are saying that is, is is only running, you know, one for they one provide power equipment. Uh, power equipment for uh, for Bangladesh electricity grid. Gas and diesel engine. Uh, gas and diesel engines, I understand, and, for and power plants. For, for power plants, and they are doing very well. There are there's a Finnish um, uh, mobile network uh, operator yes. who is looking at uh, keenly at the Bangladesh market, and uh, also uh, uh, I think a company Kone that produces elevators and lifts is looking at the Bangladesh market. And talking about the word Silla, they have been very um, good partnership in different power companies in Bangladesh. Indeed. Uh, and I heard that um, recently they have co uh, signed a contract uh, with Bangladeshi company Summit yes. um, to, uh, to, 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 to supply um, power equipments uh, for, for establishing 450 megawatt power plants. Indeed. I think there is a, there's a cooperation that has been going on between the Summit Group and Batsila for the last 20 years. Yeah. So, uh, some oh, partnership is well. Well, let, let's say partnership. partnership. Partnership in a way that you know, when when the summit group is sort of thinking of new power plants, when they think of uh, smart solutions and reliable uh, equipment, they think of Vatsila. and of course that is good for for Finnish economy economy because Vatsila is a big employer in Finland. And as I always say, when one Finnish company is doing well and uh, you know providing good solutions, then I hope that you know other people when other you know, companies when they start looking for, for counterparts, they think of, hmm, that was good Finnish company. I wonder what other good things are might be coming from Finland. So let, let me look at the Finnish opportunities. <laughs> and I'm sure that will also happen, happen with, with Bangladesh. Uh, well, one of the strong fields of industry that you have is uh, ready-made garments. Yes. And, uh, and there are Finnish, many Finnish companies who are, or shops who are buying from, from Bangladesh, but they don't have, uh, but investments so far, they haven't been in that field. It's mainly sort of, you know, buying and then uh, having things produced here and then, then buying and, and then selling them in, 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 in Finland. Um, new opportunities, um, pharmaceutical sector is one. Um, there might be possibilities, uh, not quite sure yet. Um, we have a trade promotion office based in Delhi and uh, and they are also responsible for Bangladesh. So I would foresee... Any, any, any potential for uh, the Finnish investors to come to Bangladesh and... This, I, I, I think... And what I'm, some joint ventures. What, 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 I'm, what I'm thinking here, because we have the trade office uh, in, in Delhi, I mean, there will be a couple of my colleagues visiting Bangladesh uh, next year and, and, and looking a bit for the opportunities. Well, as I say, governments don't make business, but we sort of look for the opportunities. Yes, yeah, and, uh, creating opportunities. And, and create opportunities and, and create an enabled network for yes. companies to do, to do business. And I think Bangladesh is quite lucrative. We just have to make sure that, uh, or let's say we have to make sure, you have to make sure that the business environment is transparent and, and, in, and in, in, in enabling and uh, and because business will come when they know that things function. And I think Bangladesh is very much on the right track in that respect. So, uh, I mean, you 
in your experience, you find it enabling, conducive, healthy? Uh, Is that much transparent? Well, that's a bit or difficult. Or any, any, any shortcomings? Well, that's a bit difficult for me, me to say. When I think of every country in the world, um, is there enough transparency? Is there enough? Uh, are there enough sort of in, in enabling factors? I think we all have to look at ourselves and see how we can make uh, make each other welcome, more welcoming for for business. And um, you know, uh, in Finland, for instance, we have to see that too, is our taxation system you know simple enough for companies to come? Maybe in Bangladesh, you have to see is our sort of a legal system simple enough and clear enough for companies to come? And everybody has to look at. Uh, you know what the strengths are, and, and fix it if there is something to something to be fixed. In, in your second visit, well, what are the programs you have so far? Okay, my maybe. Well, first of all, very happy to be here to be interviewed and to talk about Finland Bangladesh. and Bangladesh. And the second big thing I think that I have is uh, the opening of the Northern Lights exhibition that will take place tomorrow, okay. and that is organized together with our honorary consul, Mr. Um, Mr. Um, Aziz, Khan. Aziz Khan, and uh, and that exhibition is to celebrate the 100th anniversary of Finnish independence, and um, then I will get to know a bit of Bangladesh economy. I'll be taking a little tour, and I will see some power plants okay. and how they function. And then on Sunday I have to travel back to uh, Delhi again, but I'll be soon back here. And as I said early on. We are planning to have this political consultation sometime early 2018. We'll discuss some more issues. <music> Ambassador Nina, um, as a member of the European Union, the European Union has always been talking about uh, human rights, democracy, governance, apart from promoting business relations. So. Uh, for you, in terms of governance, in terms of transparency, in terms of democratic practices, what's, what are the take on um, money so far you have experienced it in your, um, I mean, as an ambassador for Bangladesh? Um, we firmly believe that uh, only democratic, democratically functioning countries uh, can create the opportunities and the future for their citizens. And um, I think Bangladesh is also on the, on the, on, 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 on the track, you know, uh, it has its democratic institutions, it has the parliament, it has the legal system, it has the uh, opportunities for non-governmental organizations to to, to work, there is a, a, a expression of um, a freedom of expression. Media is functioning uh, pretty well, as far as I can, uh, as, as far as I can, I can, I can understand. Um, as we were discussing earlier on, every country has some issues. Um, I was before coming here. I was looking at, looking at the uh, statistics of the, of the Transparency International, and that's an independent international organisation, and. Uh, there I got a bit worried when I, I saw how low in the statistic Bangladesh is, 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 is situated. So I'm, I think there are some, some issues that uh, the country um, must have a, have, a, have, a, have, a, have a look at. But I think that's a fact that is, uh, um, is, is known by the decision makers and uh, they will draw their the rightful conclusions uh, from that. Any, any, any observation about the confrontational nature, generally confrontational nature of politics or divisive nature of politics in Bangladesh. You know, elections um, is uh, one of the most contentious issue in mm. Bangladesh and last general elections was uh, that was not very uh, participatory actually. Uh, some of the major political parties boycotted the general mm. elections. So the next general elections, uh, the nation is ensuing, scheduled to be held in 20, end of 2018. Um, and people of the country and political parties also expecting that mm. it will be a participatory, mm. it will be an inclusive elections and election commission in Bangladesh, they have initiated a dialogue, most of the political parties, mm. including the ruling party and the major opposition party uh, outside of parliament, they participated in the dialogue process. So, uh, any observation about holding a free, fair, 
inclusive elections, how European Union is uh, looking at to this issue. To, hear, to have free and fair elections is of uh, utmost importance. And uh, I was very pleased uh, when I saw that the uh, election, uh, election Commission has already started uh, discussions and dialogue with all possible political parties and organizations to prepare the ground for the free and fair elections. And I think that's a very right uh, process that has been started. And we hope that, that it will continue and that will end up with elections that nobody feels like boycotting. Because uh, mm, when you boycott in a, in a way, um, then some people also might then question the result, you know. So therefore, you know, free and fair, large participation is extremely important. When we talk about confrontational politics, I think many countries of the world have confrontational politics. I mean, that belongs to a bit, that is sometimes a bit part of, of the nature of the politics. That, you know, when the, uh, when the issues are running high, you know, it becomes a bit confrontational as well. But as long as we can keep it with the democratic framework, that is fine. <laughs> We are just close to end our conversation, but before we conclude, um, I'm curious that you mentioned about your country that it's only 5.5 million people, and this is a country of 160 million people. And um, there was a time when Bangladesh was armed with bottomless basket. There was a time when the name of Bangladesh comes with some negative connotations, cyclones, floods, uh, this and that. So, but nowadays we have made remarkable progress and you have recognized that, acknowledged that. But where the strength lies of Bang in Bangladesh and, and if there is any weaknesses you observed or weaknesses, um, what are those? Um, I think the strength of Bangladesh lies in its young population. But there is also the challenge because the young population needs to be educated and needs to have skills to face, you know, the 21st century, and uh, and um, and to have skills to be able to work and to to contribute to the prosperity of the country. So there, we, I both see, you know, the uh, the possibility and the challenge. The strength is population. The strength is population. So we need to reap the benefit of demographic dividend. That's right. That's right. That we and I'm and, I, and I'm sure you are you are on the right way on that. And that is uh, that's one of the areas where the European Union once again. Um, is a very active partner with Bangladesh. There's now a discussion, you know, a discussion going on to extend a, a, uh, uh, a, a fairly large amount of financing for educational program. We talk about two or three hundred million euros to uh, to put into the Bangladesh education system, whether it's a you know, basic education or a, or a secondary or vocational level. So uh, that's the one area where I would pay very much attention to. Um, Bangladesh has been and very active in the in the climate change issues. I mean that's an issue that concerns all of us. But you, of course, are more vulnerable than some others because of the you know geographical nature of the country. And there, Bangladesh has been doing very good work. And there, we are also ready to and, and happy to support you to find solutions for that. Can it, can, can can you expect any? Opportunity. I mean, b from Bangladesh side, um, whether Finland got to offer for the Bangladeshi sector, different sector, like you mentioned, pharmaceuticals or RMGs or any other. Uh, research potential. and development cooperation. You have some very good brains here in this country. Um, maybe in the IT sector as well. Uh, there are Finnish, Finnish companies already who are doing a lot of IT cooperation, IT work in, in your neighbor. So maybe Bangladesh could op offer that opportunity as well. Um, Finland has rather good universities and, 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 uh, and technical uh, high schools and technical universities. We can offer the education uh, opportunities for the Bangladeshi youth. Uh, there are fees at the universities, but uh, uh, there are also, where if you can find or get a scholarship, uh, you are sure to get a good master's degree or postgraduate uh, degree in Finland. There I see one possibility for, for let's say, uh, increasing the cooperation between the two countries. So, last question, what are the memories you're taking back home uh, in your second visit? So, looking forward to, uh, to have a bit of a tour, helicopter tour, above Bangladesh to see the country, to see, you know, what the nature looks like, you know, see the water and the greenery and, uh, 
and how everything is placed uh, that, that I think will, will give me a, uh, a, a good memory. But also I will take back with me the situation with Rohingyas and how you are dealing with that and how we all have to sort of give you support to deal with the issue and, and, and how we all together have to look for a solution for, for the And we expect you as a staunch advocate for Bangladesh in the international arena to confront, to fight this situation. We will do our best. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. For nice to be here. I'm frankly speaking, thank you very much. Thank it's you. a pleasure. Dear viewers, thank you indeed for watching my program, Frankly Speaking. We invite you to watch our next episode and then do take care. Goodbye.